Good day. Welcome to Thursday, March 18th, 2021. It's good to be with you again. I'm still cold out there. <laughs> and it sounds like next, the beginning of next week, we're going to get some more stuff. And so we're in that mode and it's still winter with us, isn't it? But it's supposed to be spring coming the 20th. So we'll see what happens. Hope you are doing well wherever you are. Um, it was good to be able to have worship last night. It's um, But it started raining a little bit, and there was nothing on the radar, and nothing predicted. <laughs> We're in it, and so finally getting caught up in moisture. I know a lot of uh, you farmers are, are needing that moisture, and so, and anybody who's doing gardening knows that the ground needs the moisture too. Um, today I'm going to share with you the psalm that's for this coming Sunday and share with you some thoughts on it. In the Taking Faith Home a service section, it says this about Psalm 51. It's a prayer for cleansing and pardon. Christian prison ministries reach out to inmates with the love and hope of Jesus Christ. There are many who care for the children and families of prisoners and lead Bible studies and pray with the prisoners. And so it's encouraging us to pray for those who work with inmates and their families this week. And so I'm, want, I'm going to share with you Psalm 51 verses 1 through 12. And see, Psalm 51 is the one we use on Ash Wednesday for our um, because it starts our time of repentance and preparing our hearts and minds for all that Jesus is going through. And we, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be recognizing that even more so. Psalmist writes, and uh, thinking is King David, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit with you about that too. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me, known, have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Here ends the reading of the psalm. And in my uh, study Bible, I, uh, there's this, um, this particular kind of thing for us to think about um, for this particular psalm. It's entitled, entitled, David Caught in the Act. Israel had a strange way to remember its heroes is a subtitle to that. David found a place in the hearts of the Israelites, something like the one Abraham Lincoln found in the hearts of Americans. Both of these guys led their nations through dark hours with courage, wisdom, and deep faith. But there are essential differences in the way they are remembered. Suppose, for example, that Abraham Lincoln had been caught in the act of adul adultery. Would his private outpouring of grief before God have been included in America's July 4th celebration? Hardly. America tends to cover up the faults of its heroes and even invent stories about spotless honesty. Yet, for David, no cover-up was attempted. 
just the opposite. Psalm 51 publishes David's anguished reaction when he was caught in sin. The story behind Psalm 51 is told in 2 Samuel 11 and 12, a sordid tale of adultery, intrigue, and murder. David, the greatest king in Israel's history, acted like the worst. David apparently thought nothing of his crime until the prophet Nathan accused him to his face. Then, in tears, David confessed. And this, Psalm 51, is one of the results, recorded along with the story of David's deeds in Scripture. It may have been used in a worship service as a guide for others' confession, and we can use it for ours, can't we? You know, we think of David's legacy. All nations have heroes. Israel may have been alone in making heroic literature about its heroes' failings. In confessing his failures openly, David was certainly unique among all leaders of his day. He knew his place before God, and his humility made him an example for the people. Ultimately, Israel remembered David more for his devotion to God than, his, than for his military achievements. In centuries to come, Israel looked for a son of David to come to save them, and they wanted a very strong leader, one humble enough to know that God must lead the leaders. And so it ends with a life question. When you fail, what is your response? Do you cover up your failure? Do you publicize your confession? May we, um, you know, we start our worship services most of the time during Easter, we have a tendency to maybe not so much because we've come out in, in, uh, in praise, but most of the time we have to take time to say, hey God, I botched it up. And that's so important for each and every one of us. I know I do that every day, knowing that I need to get rid of that and so I can be filled with the new me that says, hey God, thank you for, for forgiving me and leading me out. Let us pray. Lord God, wash us through and through. Remember our sin no more. Make us as your people, a community of forgiving people. Give us courage to forgive and then show the world new possibilities. Bless all of our ministries of repentance and reconciliation. And Lord God, we pray your healing hand to rest upon all who are in need. We think of those who, who may be our friends, our relatives, our community members, anybody who is in need of, of healing. We pray your healing hand on them. We pray for all of those who are dealing with the death of someone they love and care about, of friends, family, whoever. We pray that you will comfort them with your grace, hope, and love. Lord God, we're still stuck in the midst of this the coronavirus, and our state is still having high counts. Lord, we pray you continue to be with the medical teams that are working with everyone. We pray that you will... Um, bring your healing upon us all and surround us with your healing grace. We pray for all of us who are receiving shots, the vaccine for the coronavirus. Help us to still do those things that are going to be keeping us safe, such as masking, social distancing, and keeping ourselves, keep making sure to get the germs taken care of on our hands. Lord God, all these things. Anything else you see that we need, we pray that you will grant us through the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
May God's blessings, peace, hope, love, courage be yours this day. Thank you for today. Bye for now.